Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining our briefing today. For the last couple of days, we've been preparing for a dangerous winter storm that will threaten North Carolina later tonight and tomorrow. Our forecasters expect significant impacts across our state. If you hadn't already, now is the time to get prepared. This storm's a menace. As much as a foot of snow is expected to fall in the mountains and foothills, and in central North Carolina, freezing rain and sleet on top of some snow will fall. The eastern part of our state expects heavy rain and flash flooding, plus high wind and gusts. Regardless of where you live, pay close attention to your local weather forecast to get prepared and to know whether it's too dangerous to go out. Plan to stay home tomorrow, Sunday. Today, make sure you have groceries, medications, and other essentials like water, batteries, and pet food that you'll need for the next few days. You can go to readync.gov for guidelines on how to put together a family emergency kit. Our State Highway Patrol advises staying off the roads in most parts of the state on Sunday and Monday if you can. This will protect you and your family and help the road and utility crews do their work. If you have to travel, make sure you check drivenc.gov for updated information on road conditions and closures. Our emergency management team expects ice and wind to bring down some trees and power lines. and We're in contact with utility companies in advance of expected power outages. Duke Energy tells us they are bringing in extra crews from other parts of the country to help out. I spoke with Duke Energy CEO Lynn Good this morning, and she's promised to activate 10,000 people to deal with this. Our Department of Transportation, along with local governments across the state, have applied salt and brine to the roads to help make them safe. And I've declared a state of emergency to ease transportation rules and aid with storm preparation and response. Shelters will be opened if necessary. I've also activated 200 National Guard soldiers to assist in storm response. The National Guard will work in western and central counties to help with transportation. They're equipped with emergency response vehicles that can move through the snow, such as Humvees and four-wheel drive ambulances. We'll stage National Guard and Department of Transportation teams at trouble spots on our interstates. We thank these citizen soldiers and all of the emergency responders in advance for your service during this storm. If your power goes out and you're trying to stay warm at home, remember to keep generators outside and away from open windows or doors to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. Never burn charcoal indoors or use a gas grill indoors. And remember to only use 911 for a true emergency. Power outages should be reported to your utility company. Joining me today are Transportation Secretary Eric Boyette, Public Safety Secretary Eddie Buffalo, Health and Human Services Secretary Cody Kensley, Colonel Freddie Johnson, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, and Emergency Management Chief of Staff Don Campbell. Our American Sign Language Interpreter is Monica McGee, and behind the scenes, Jackie and Jasmine Mativier are our Spanish language interpreters. First, we'll hear from Emergency Management Chief of Staff Don Campbell. Don? Thank you, Governor, and good morning. As of 8 o'clock this morning, we have activated the State Emergency Operations Center and State Emergency Response Teams for the Winter Storm Response. The CERT and partner agencies are standing by and ready to assist. We are incredibly proud of the team here and at the local level safety professionals and essential workers who have been working this week and into the weekend to prepare and respond to this storm. We're prepared to assist our local and state partners with storm related needs as we move through this event. We are continuing to coordinate with counties, making sure that we are ready to open shelters or warming centers as needed where there may be areas of prolonged power outages, as well as monitoring several critical infrastructure sectors for impacts such as healthcare while we know they're already impacted by COVID-19. We're also continuing to coordinate with private sector partners who are responsible for critical infrastructure like telecommunications companies and our electric utilities. 
To ensure our first responders are available for emergency response, please only dial 911 for life safety events and report any power outages to your service provider directly. As the governor said, today is the day to be wrapping up your personal preparedness tasks before the storm arrives. If you need guidance on your winter storm preparations, please visit readync.gov website for personal preparedness resources. And after the storm arrives, please go to readync.gov on up-to-date information on power outages, where shelters may be open, and other resources. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Next, we will hear from North Carolina Department of Transportation Secretary Eric Boyette. Thank you, Governor. NCDOT, we have been preparing for this storm system and we want all of our North Carolinians to be ready too. If you haven't already, get your emergency supplies, anything else that you may need today, as the Governor was saying. More than 1,200 DOT employees and contractors have been working hard to pre-treat our roads since Thursday. Our crews have spread nearly two and a half million gallons of brine and have prepared our equipment for a post-storm response. Our crews are ready to respond after the storm hits, and we will plow and de-ice roads, cut and shove, download trees, and remove debris. We have more than 160,000 tons of salt on hand and over 400 trucks staged and ready to go. We are doing our part, but we need everyone else to do their part too. Once the storm hits later today and tonight, please stay home. We are expecting this storm to impact areas all across our state. Understand that like all industries, NCDOT staff and our contract resources have been impacted by COVID-19 and labor shortages. We may not be able to respond in your area as quickly as we have in the past, but please rest assured our crews and contractors will get our roads open as soon as possible. Travel could be greatly impacted for several days after the storm. Please stay off the roads, protect yourself and your families. Avoid driving, and if you must travel, please be patient and stay safe. We will do everything we can to reopen roads as quickly as possible. Governor. Thank you, Secretary Boyette. Now we will hear from Colonel Freddie Johnson, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Colonel Johnson. Thank you, Governor Cooper. The State Highway Patrol stands ready to assist as we await the incoming winter storm. Our sworn and civilian members across the state are currently making preparations for what this storm will bring. Our message is the same as that expressed by the governor. The public safety is paramount. As we prepare, so should the public. Tomorrow will certainly bring deteriorating driving conditions and today is the time to plan. Only those who must drive should be on the roadways in the affected areas tomorrow and those driving must ensure their vehicles are ready and they are ready. Tips such as checking tire pressure, wiper conditions, and making sure all the lights are in good working order are essential. Additionally, make sure you have an emergency kit that includes items listed on the readync.gov webpage because you never know what you might face. If you're involved in a collision, remove your vehicle from the roadway if the collision is minor in nature. And as always, slow down, and keep a watch out for first responders and crews working alongside the roadway during and after the storm. For up-to-date roadway conditions, please visit drivenc.gov and avoid calling 911 or Star HP unless it's an emergency. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Colonel Johnson. We also have with us uh, Secretary's Cody Kinsley and Eddie Buffalo, but we also have the Adjutant General of the National Guard, Todd Hunt, who is with us today. Please take time today to prepare your family for this storm and follow updated forecasts and severe weather impacts. I'll now take questions. All right, we've got uh, folks on the phone. Our first question is from Adam Owen of WREL. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, sir. Uh, the first uh, question is about uh, supplies at stores. We've seen some stores that look like they're doing okay, others that look like they're running out of certain supplies. Didn't know if supply chain issues 
uh, you were hearing about were causing a problem there and if anything could be done about it. And, and the second question I have is in regards to some scams we're already hearing about from viewers. Uh, one of them or a couple of them telling us that uh, they're getting contacted saying their power might be turned off if they don't uh, pay a fee. Um, just your thoughts on those two things. Well, first, we want families to be prepared, and a number of them have been getting ready for the last couple of days, so it's a, a natural occurrence that stores would begin running low on supplies that we know people will need. We hope people will take time today to check around to find uh, things that they would need for their home. I'm going to let Chief of Staff Don Campbell with Emergency Management maybe address that a little bit further. And remember, with with scanners, anybody who contacts you over the phone or through an email that is trying to get you to give them information about you, uh, it's usually a scam. Uh, your utility company has your information about you, and uh, we we want to keep people as safe as possible uh, from scams. Uh, we, we want to make sure we work with the Attorney General's office on that. Do you have anything to add on supplies, uh, Chief Staff Campbell? Thank you, Governor, and thank you for the question. We don't have any indication that there are challenges in addition to what we've already seen of um, challenges with the supply chain. Specifically, we're happy to see that individuals are going out and purchasing the items that they need for their preparedness kits. One reminder that we do have is that individuals focus on what they would need for the next two to three days and not to take more than they need in the stores. However, we're very happy to see that stores are very quickly being able to replenish as we have continued trucks on the road today and early tomorrow until the storm uh, starts, starts to turn a little bit more. So thank you. That's all the questions that we have. Thank you very much for being with us today and stay careful out there. Thank you.